Okay, so let's try another example where we calculate the residence time. And in this case, we'll just make a modification to the, the previous example and we'll restrict the inflow to uh, this region and the outflow to this region. We'll keep the flux the same, uh, so the overall flow rate will be reduced. This, this length here is uh, one-tenth of this overall length. So the overall flow rate will be reduced by um, to 10% uh, and we'll change the geometry of the flow. So here's the model and the geometry has these two points in it. Otherwise it's the same as the last geometry. And the um, the change in the variables really is is, really, is just here. This term BL, this is the length of the input, and it's used to calculate the overall flow rate. Uh, the flux Q is the same, and all these other um, terms are the same as last time. So the geometry yeah, we've just added these points here um, that gives us those two points and the consequence of that is then that we've uh, changed the geometry and we need to just go in and check that the boundary conditions are set up right and so here's the inlet for the flux and the outlet here is um, pressure is equal to zero and similarly for the transport inflow here where we specify the concentration and outflow is uh, is the same condition now if you just go and take the model that you set up previously and add these points then just go and and check in the um, these two physics interfaces and make sure that the boundaries are set up correctly usually it seems like it, it works fairly well for the outflow but that inflow isn't quite right but check all of them the other thing you want to do is check this boundary probe because previously we had the boundary probe uh, occupying this whole boundary but now the outflow is just over this boundary so just make sure that the probe is only taking the average over this uh, this small boundary here. Okay, so we go and, and do the flow calculations and the concentrations. So, well, I guess we need to go and do the calculation. The pressure distribution looks like this, high pressure here, low pressure here. And then the transport analysis um, it's going to have a bit of a different geometry. Uh, the flow now comes in here, the mass is increasing, and it's going to spread across the region and exit here. So, um, spreading along like this, and again, we can see that ridge of high concentration. And now it's kind of uh, pointing down, and now we've got some arrival here, some breakthrough at the output, and uh, we get a little vestige of this low concentration here along the boundary. Okay, so that's the concentration simulation. These um, uh, cumulative RTDs, so this is the concentration coming out normalized to the input concentration. So at first nothing happens and then the um, tracer arrives at the output and it increases and um, approaches one here at the, the final uh, simulation time. Now if we take the derivative of this we get the RTD curve and that looks like this. So we get this pulse and then we start to see this longer tail um, and that's a result of the, um, the the relatively dilute the original water that was in the reactor um, kind of getting trapped along the sides and then slowly uh, slowly bleeding out okay so those are the results uh, and 
let's go and do the calculations. The integrated concentration out. So we take this curve, and if we integrate this curve, then uh, we'll get the total um, the total mass that has uh, come out of the reactor scaled to the total mass that was put in. Okay, so integrating the e function with time uh, will give us that, and here's the result. So 0.97. So 90% of the mass uh, that went in came out, uh, and well, actually, that's not not if we the way to think about this, I guess, is if we put a pulse of uh, mass in, if we did a pulse test, then after this time, 97% would would have come out. Um, with a step tracer test, then the, I guess we think about it a little bit differently. But if we think about it in terms of a pulse, then I think that the, the interpretation of this is is clear. So um, essentially, the the test is um, essentially complete at this point. So the mean residence time uh, will be the kind of the center of gravity of this curve, and we get it here using the same approach that we had before. And we do that uh, integral, and we get that the mean residence time is 913 seconds, which is, I guess, right about here. And so what we what we get is the mean residence time. Uh, it's it's not it's not really uh, well. It's affected by this long tail, um, rather than being right here at the peak. It's uh, somewhat off of the peak, so right about in here. And the variance we get by t minus that 913, and we integrate that up. And we can evaluate that. And there's the, the integral, uh, 70,000. Now remember, this is the variance. So we can calculate the um, standard deviation, which is a little bit easier to conceptualize. So let's just take the square root of uh, 70,000. It's 264. So let's just uh, go back here. So um, 264 is about half of this uh, width here. So the standard deviation is uh, plus or minus that um, about that much. And that seems about right. Um, it's, it's not symmetrically distributed. Um, and so we would expect now to see that manifested in the skewness. This is a, a long tail. And so if we calculate the skewness um, using this formula, we see we have this uh, positive number, and that's giving us a positive skewness that results from this long tail. We can also calculate the volume um, using this integral, and that gives us a volume of 0.95. So the actual volume is 1. And so you can see from the calculation, we're, we're pretty close. But the volume that the um, test sees is slightly smaller than the actual volume. And perhaps that's because there's still a little bit of the region that has not quite been swept out. 